All right, guys. So I really hope that uh, the journey has been great so far. Uh, we are all excited to see how your projects will unfold in a few hours time. And we are also looking forward to your pitches, which is like the crowning of, of this hackathon. And um, we will really know how much you have benefited from, from the mentors presence, how much you were able to be innovative and really um, touch upon the most pressing problems that we are facing in our Arab world. So I really uh, am looking forward along with the rest of the team for, for your pitches. But before we do that, we really want you to, to have a bit uh, more background about what's expected in the pitch. So if, if you have done this before, if you have been into hackathons uh, or any kind of entrepreneurial competitions, then you probably have a, a, an idea and you probably have some experience. However, if this is your first time, it's really important for you to understand what are the basics of pitching and also understand why we do the pitch and what's expected in the pitch. All right, so um, today we have uh, Mr. Cowan Smith, who's also one of your mentors, generously helping us with this uh, session. And he will be uh, helping out with uh, insights, sharing his experience. He has been into so many hackathons and is really familiar with that. I know he has been helping some of your teams in terms of the pitch and its components. So we are very happy to, to have him also in this session and uh, we look forward. So um, Cohen, do you have any introductory remarks before we start going over the uh, pitch deck uh, template, which we have already provided to the participants? Uh, well, maybe, uh, so my hackathon experience has mostly been hackathons at MIT, so the MIT COVID challenge especially, I've been a winner of the MIT Latin America challenge, I've been a mentor in the, MI in the, MIT, Let uh, in the MIT Lebanon challenge, I've been an organizer in the India challenge, uh, track support there, and I've been even a track lead in the uh, Hack for the Future, with, uh, specific for the, uh, for the future of work. Uh, I've also given various pitch trainings organizations at MIT Arab uh, Conference, the UCL's Ramsey Society, their hackathon, uh, Fruitpoints AI, and we'll also be giving one at a Dutch Honor Society. I myself am a student from the Netherlands. I uh, study economics, and I've also conducted research on uh, fintech, uh, the socioeconomic consequence of AI, and um, political economic history, uh, especially in an American and German context. That's amazing. Great. So uh, I will start sharing my screen with the pitch deck template. And guys, uh, we have already mentioned this in the pitch deck. We do not encourage you uh, to, to use this as your pitch deck. OK, so it's just a template. And honestly, it's not the best template. And it's done like that on purpose because you want the, we don't want to have it to be too good that you would want to use it. Okay, so uh, again, we do not encourage you to use this template, but it will give you a rough idea about what needs to be there, the content, and um, really how you need to think about it. And with this session, with the extra tips, I think you will be ready. All right. If I so give a comment, uh, so what I always, and I've recommended quite a couple of you, it's really good to use templates. Well, not this one, but it's a good idea to use templates. Uh, if you if you Google uh, uh, Google presentation template and then your topic, and then you should get a really, really nice template for uh, for your pitch deck. And this is a really easy way to get a clean, make sure as well that they're basically they're clean. So don't have too many pictures. It's difficult to read and such, uh, but you should be able to find a, quite a couple of good ones. Also, a couple of general tips when you are presenting uh, that might be of use. So the first thing I would recommend have good lighting. So it is, for me, it's morning now, so I have pretty good lighting. But in general, for instance, if I will close my blinds, and then you already see that I'm really dependent on my lights. And if you put that off as well, then basically now you have a really, really bad camera. So make sure that you have a uh, really good lighting. So I have here. Uh, that will be my main recommendation for you guys. And as well, if you want to get a personal connection, now you have barely any personal connection with me because I'm looking at the slides. But if I look directly into the webcam, you get this personal connection. But don't keep staring into it. Then you seem like it's like you're looking into someone's eyes. You don't want to do that for five straight minutes and you look creepy. So make sure to always look at the slides as well every now and then. And to put your laptop a little higher because you probably have this one teacher that teaches like this, right? So it's really important not to do that. A lot of 
model P, sometimes your laptop looks like this. So this is also not ideal. So I have an external webcam and my laptop is still a little higher, but I highly recommend to put a couple of study books. Like here. if you have big accountancy books, they're perfect medical books. Uh, just put them under your laptop. And that is a really a recommendation so that you basically get way more personal connection like I got it set up now. Awesome. So I hope guys, you, you got that. Make sure you, your laptop is a bit high to be able to look at the camera directly. And uh, like, yeah, don't just stare at the camera all the time. Make sure you, you will sometimes look at the slides and have good lighting uh, fa facing you and not just facing maybe half of your face to have, um, yeah, uh, the right kind of lighting. Okay, uh, so the very first slide, we expect you to, to have uh, a logo. So if you haven't done that, please create one. You can use many tools such as Canva and others. And you can have a catchy motto as well, which is really the tagline of your business. So uh, Colin, do you have anything to say here? Yeah, I really agree with this. It's, this is something something I often also see you uh, go wrong. That you like talk for a minute about the group you're focusing on, and the judges are just confused. Like you just spend a minute just describing a case, but I still no idea what you're going to do to solve this. So start with an introduction that basically it's very short describes your company, and it can be anything from, uh, for instance, we're going to solve. Uh, we found a way to solve hunger. Uh, in the uh, in the north in northern Africa, or we uh, found a way to um, to cure uh, do improve cancer cure in uh, in Lebanon, things like that. So, really, shortly describe what you're doing. Use a catchy phrase. Those that I mentioned mentor, uh, mentored here will probably remember that the first thing I did is as well to basically help you build a catchy phrase here because you need, the judges need to be able to understand what you're doing and always tell this in the form of a story. That's what I always find really, really important. You often see people that basically start telling a lot of information. Uh, it's really important to tell a story because stories stick. Basically, that's just the way the brain is built. You have this little, uh, the middle side, uh, it's, it's, that's, that's like the reptile part. It just works with stories. It's remember stories. The rational part, the thinking part is laid on top of that, but it isn't what remembers and what engages. So to make sure to tell a story. Exactly. And although we are using text in the template, again, just to tell you what needs to be on the slide, we are not expecting you to use a lot of text on the slide itself. So you have to use very, very minimal text and you have to enlarge your font so it cannot be small text size. And as Cohen said, you, uh, stories are really the best way to start a pitch and the best way to attract the attention of the jury and the audience. Do you have any examples of catchy stories or uh, do you still remember any interesting pitch that you heard? Yeah, I, I think I, I can remember quite a couple. Uh, and I think indeed the key is that you tell a story. I don't remember the textual context sometimes. It, really remember the story. I recently was at a uh, the MIT Arab conference where I also was one of the speakers, uh, the speed talk. And he also had uh, uh, was someone that gave an example of, of surgery. And she was talking about this patient that, that basically went through the surgery uh, using the platform from she had created and then she ended up with and this patient was my mother and it was for me a very, very strong strong connection and i also saw uh i also saw for instance a in another in the hack for the future where i was track lead i also saw that one of the uh participants had also this little story of uh, it was for a translation it was for a translation platform uh from english to hindu uh via whatsapp and the, what they basically did is that they had this um this they used very were very beautiful drawings on the side note of this this girl that wanted to learn English, but how should she do that? She gave that they gave that story, and all I really liked about that as well is that they also used representative pictures. So if you're talking especially at the MENA region, you want to use pictures of people that are representative of the MENA region, and she used uh, pictures there of a drawing that was representative of a um, uh, of of the India region. So the so this is so t things like that can really really help your story, and it's really important to consider that to use pictures that represent the people you're talking about. Exactly, and yes, images are very powerful indeed. Make sure you find uh, the right kind of image that uh, that will um, be able to transmit the message. All right, and after you introduce this, your problem, and it's always that we need to know the problem first. So we have been highlighting this so many times in this hackathon. I hope that you are all convinced why we do that. 
um, it, it would be the time to talk, okay, so this is the problem and this is what we want to do to help solve it or alleviate it or reduce it. And here I would like to say that it's super important to have what we call a problem solution match. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes in pitches, we have like an awesome problem, but the solution after you think about it wouldn't really help significantly in solving that problem. So be careful that you don't just find a catchy story uh, about a, a, a problem or the general problem that you're trying to solve, but your solution doesn't seem to really do much about it. So you have to be very careful about this problem solution fit, if you want to say. And uh, here, as we said before, you do not have to go into the technical details of your solution. Just keep it high level and tell us about the most important features that the users will will have to know about in order to use your solution properly. Cohen, any other tips? Yeah, really an emphasis on most important features. You have three minutes. We don't expect you to be able to talk, tell us everything. And please make sure not to, uh, to, to try to get too much info in. What it, probably the worst thing that I've seen is, and this is also related to having too much text on the slide, is when you're basically talking and there's way too much text on the slide and trying to read it, but not really, uh, but it goes too quickly. And then you, you're, because you're also talking through it. And what's especially bonus points for being bad is if you then also have different text talking about something else and I'm trying to read it and also listening and then I don't get anything in, you go to the next slide and I'm just confused. So make sure to really uh, focus on your solution as you as, uh, uh, was mentioned here. And I really, really agree with the importance of um, making sure to focus on also a feasible solution. We don't expect you to immediately solve world hunger. Uh, it's basically make sure that it, that's a very catchy story, but make sure you actually can do something about it. And it, you also have you have a couple of days, so we don't expect you to uh, to solve these problems completely or to have everything thought out. But it is great to have the the main story here and the solutions here. So that will so focus. That's the, basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and in case here you you don't have anything from your actual solution to show, which is fine. Uh, you can use what we call icons. So icons are, uh, or we call them also vectors. So they are usually in the format of .png. If you're using PowerPoint, for example, you can look at uh, uh, on Google for icons um, and simply you will put the icon, change its color depending on your template colors and just have a word or two under it to explain what you're talking about. Remember that uh, the slides are only a visual aid so uh, again, like personally, I cannot uh, concentrate with what you're saying and, and read the slides at the same time. I just get lost there. So I either want to look at you and listen to you and have the slide as a visual aid or you will lose me. So always remember that your slides are, do not, should not tell everything. They are just a support for your pitch. And really, uh, in addition to the slides, you have to prepare what we call a script. And the script is what you're going to be saying orally. So as you can see now, there are very few things written on the slide. So I'm not reading from the slide. I am saying something else. So in order for you to be able to deliver a great pitch in just three minutes, you have to have really prepared what you're going to be saying. And you should have written it down. This is what we call the script. And we really uh, you should ace the script because this is what we're going to be recalling by the end of it. Uh, so after you talk about your solution, it's very important to differentiate it from what already exists there. But make sure to use our, our colors. Yeah, colors okay, so that was Jalal, I believe. If I, if I, I was also thinking uh, what might be also relevant to consider for you guys is I'm not sure how uh, this exactly how we were going to do it here, but um, basically in some hackathons, you, get, you still have control over your slides. And in some hackathons, you have, you lose control of your slides. You simply upload them. And then you need to have the, um, uh, you, then you especially need to consider 
there the how you are presenting it and then you need to uh, basically say if you lose control you probably just say next at the end of each slide and i've seen presentations where people try to put 43 slides in or it was i think they put it down after i told them to put it down they only put it down to 30 and they had to say next 30 times they also didn't manage because they had three minutes and remember at three minutes you have a hard cutoff point so basically you just lose every further uh, you cannot say anything further. And this is really problematic because uh, it might be that they're missing some key slides on your team. So make sure to stay under the three minutes. And as well, when you need to upload them in, uh, upload them via uh, Google presentation, make sure that you are making it in Google presentation because you cannot very quickly put this to PowerPoint. That just simply doesn't work. So it's very important that you have it there as a... Um, as a, a Google presentation. If you have this problem and you in, in a hackathon and you need to what you can and you need to basically put it to a different format, what you can do is open the screen open the screen, screenshot every single slide and put them simply in another in, in the uh, required upload deck. Then it still looks good. But you cannot basically if if I will download this as a PowerPoint, it look what look completely different. It will look awful. Yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, guys, remember that uh, you have to be ready for anything wrong to happen. So uh, this is the beauty and, and the ugliness of doing things virtually and online. Uh, the, the beauty of it is that we can have so many people from around the world, uh, um, like sharing their experiences in one place and participating in one hackathon. Uh, but of course, things could go wrong, like your internet gets cut off or other things. And this is why you have a team. Okay. So yes, we do recommend that one of you would do the pitch. However, we highly, highly recommend that more than one person is ready to take over in case anything goes wrong. And this is why we're also asking you to have your uh, pitch decks uploaded on the Slack at 2 p.m. one hour before the pitches, because in case we lose you and you cannot share your screen anymore we have to do it ourselves and we really cannot delay things a lot so uh, you cannot say oh like i was cut off like pause the timer give me i don't know five minutes to fix this it's not possible so we have very limited time on our hands and we have to respect this time for the sake of all the participants all the judges and um, everything else so just keep that in mind. Krish, do you have any tips on that kind of uh, thing, like backup, how to uh, prepare for crisis? <laughs> Definitely. I, I think like one of the most important thing, uh, I think Cohen also made this point and Mona, you also made this point. You have only three minutes. So as a team, you get only three minutes to pitch or over here, like, four or five minutes to pitch the thing is that you have to concise your story you do not need to keep a lot of slides first of all if you are keeping a lot many slides then it is going to be your problem because you have to do a quick transition from one point to another at the same time if you're keeping your uh, a good kind of pitch or a good kind of a script ready so that if anybody is not available so for example uh, I am pitching a, a point with Quinn and I was supposed to take over and I was supposed to, you know, completely run through the entire pitch. But for some reason, due to some technical difficulties, I'm not able to do it and Quinn has to take over. So there has to be a script that can be taken over by Quinn and he can then uh, present that. At the same time, it's also important for every one of you to understand that do not use too much of information on the slide which is again, one of the thing, keep only those information, keep those points which are really important and which will really help you. So one of the thing is when you are pitching, keep a track of the time. When you are looking for any of these kind of crisis, make sure that you have a backup and try to make sure that your pitch deck is with the present if you are presenting then the entire team everybody should have it and keep it into a, a unique location like a google doc or somewhere where everybody can access it if it has to be given to you know the committee the organizer committee if they are controlling your slide then please do that and make sure that you are all of you have a proper script for that pitch so that you don't have to go back and say that how much time try to practice as much as you can because if you go without a practice, you might feel that, okay, I will be able to cover it. You won't. 
So mm -hmm. that's again one of the thing. I think like we can proceed with the slides and based yes. on each of the slides we can okay. have more. So thank you, very useful tips indeed. Uh, and the, in this uh, slide, the underlying magic or what's unique about you or what you call the unique value proposition, you really have to tell us how you stand out because as we mentioned uh, continuously, there are so many existing alternatives in the market, even if they are not direct competitors, even if they are not uh, using the same technology, but still you have to tell us why do you stand out? Why is this unique? And kindly refrain from just using the uh, overused adjectives of we are like uh, super user friendly, uh, fast, reliable, these things, especially if you haven't created the, uh, the solution yet, because these are all assumptions. So I believe you cannot just stand out based on an assumption. Mm -hmm. To okay, uh, with the demo, uh, like this is really kind of, it will vary between the different teams. So I know that some of you will have something to show, whereas some other teams might not. And this is totally fine. Again, we do uh, expect to have this variance among the different teams. But just uh, like we have to see, because this is one of the judging criteria, it's called progress. Like we have to see what you have done over uh, the past few days and um, this doesn't if it doesn't have to be like a mock-up or um, a screenshot it could be really like uh, evidence about any validation you've done um, maybe you run a, you run a survey you you got in contact uh, with some people so just tell us more about this and now very excitingly you have to tell us how you can make money simply because, as we mentioned, even if this is a nonprofit initiative, it has to be sustainable. So we do expect you to have revenue streams and not to be relying completely on external funding. Uh, so, Cohen, any comments on that? Um, not overly. I think that uh, this should not. Do you? I, what I would recommend to consider here is to have a detailed slide on this in the appendix. You can have an appendix. So if you don't get a question like "What is your business model?" Good question, and you go to the uh, appendix. Uh, and uh, well, perhaps on the last slide as well. And I see there is a question of that in the chat. Um, so it is you. You can basically. Uh, there, was, there was also some confusion when I, I mentioned on this. Uh, you don't have to give a detailed video, I think, but it's more of a suggestion. It is really nice to include a mock-up. For instance, if you say we're going to build a website, it's really great if you have a mock-up from a website, or if we're going to build an app, but you have a mock-up from an app, then the judges have somewhat an idea of what you actually want to build and how it's going to look like. Yes, exactly. And here by business model, we do not expect to see your like forecast Excel sheet with, uh, you know, figures and numbers. We just expect you to tell us, uh, I'm gonna, for example, if you are uh, creating an app, uh, we will have uh, affiliate marketing, we will have uh, subscriptions, we will have so just tell us what kind of revenue streams you you are um, willing to adopt, basically, again, to just have more sustainability. Akrish, anything to add here? Yeah, so uh, very good points, Cohen and Mona. So what I feel is that, uh, as Mona said, like, you know, you don't have to really elaborate onto it, but it's also very important for you to uh, put out the points, like what are your revenue stream? For example, look into Uber today right? Like Uber, when they started their revenue stream had been very focused on, you know, uh, one person, single person who is going to uh, take a cab, right? After that, Uber started the Uber corporate, right? And then Uber gave out those subscription base, like, you know, you can have monthly subscription where you have. So those are different ways of tagging the customer. But at the same time, you have revenue stream. Your revenue stream could be like for Uber, it was corporate. It was through direct uh, people. It was through marketing. So those could be a revenue stream. If you look into e-commerce, the same thing, bulk ordering, single ordering, how it can, can you create a channel with uh, users or can you create a channel with different uh, entities like, you know, let's say Unilever or anything. So how do you create that entire ecosystem? What is your revenue stream? You have to define them. You don't have to really put out numbers. You don't have to really so show that what is my year on your growth? But yes, if I say that I start my beach at market, I'm starting with, let's say, 200 subscription. And with my other marketing models, I'm going to 
uh, get ahead and go to at least with one of our revenue stream or my channel sorry, to yes, achieve. Yeah, sorry. No, no, it's, uh, I think somebody by mistake is unmuted. Oh, it's no okay. Worries. Go, carry on. Okay, so one of the things is that you have to show that from if I'm at quarter one, I'm saying that I'm going to have $100,000 revenue uh, through selling 10,000 uh, you know, uh, subscriptions. So how do I go over there? Can I increase my subscription model? Can I increase my revenue? And what will be the stream for that? So that exactly is important over here. You don't have to put out graphs, charts, but you have to put out your uh, you know, business model that how are you going to tap to the market, which are your channels, and how are you going to go to your year and year growth or a quarter and quarter growth? Like what will be the entire thing? Awesome. And also we have the go-to-market strategy. So basically this is the channels part in the Lean Canvas model that we um, described yesterday. So how are you gonna reach your customers and most importantly, your early adopters? Who are they? If you haven't told us yet, who are the target customers? This is, your, um, this is the right time to talk more about them and to explain who they are and, and their different characteristics and demographics and explain your strategy to reach them. Uh, any comments on that, Cohen? Uh, I think also related to the last slide, um, if you are, uh, if you have to basically put limited time into something, I'd recommend to consider putting limited time, especially into these two in, in the hackathon. And this is because uh, the hackathon, of course, you have to basically tell a convincing story. And it's really, you basically have three minutes. You have to tell a very convincing story in that. So if you take and you have to introduce yourself, you have to introduce your team, uh, you have to give a bit of a sketch. So then you have like, what, two minutes left. And if you spend one minute on this, it's better to spend 30 seconds more on your uh, on your story. So it's clear to the judges. Most successful teams that actually one I've seen spent especially a lot of time on their story and making sure the idea is clear. And also, this might be partly because you're also not, of course, asking the judges for money. So that's also a difference. So if you will uh, be speaking to investors, you may want to consider putting this more in. But even then, it will probably get into the Q&A if you only have three minutes. You cannot give a detailed business plan in three minutes. Exactly. Krish, any other insights? Yeah. So uh, I think like same points what Cohen said, but uh, one of the good thing which we already have to do is you have to keep the story alive. So from the previous slide, when you're going to this, or even you know, if you're trying to merge these two slides into one and create a story of your own, you have to make sure that uh, how you're gonna reach your customers are your channel. And early adopter is basically your beachhead market. So make sure that you do that. Like who is going to, you have an app, your TAM could be 1 million user. And that is what I've been uh, talking in, in to the previous, uh, you know, in the previous night, I was talking to a few teams that your TAM could be a huge TAM. The total addressable market could be huge. But if you can really prove that there are early adopters to your application, that's how you can get into the market. And for that, you need to define your beachhead market. Like where do you see a high success of the launch? So you have to define that, that how you're going to do that and who will be your customer and how will you make sure that they will be your early adopters. So it's very important to focus on these points. If I can give one comment addition on that, I fully, fully agree, especially on integrating the slides. That's, I think, really, really important. So for instance, if you tell your story, you can also basically make this your go-to-market target group. So if you, you can also refer back to it and have a nice story throughout your slides. So don't make these separate a little bunker, so to say, these slides. You can say, for instance, if you talk in the, say, the first slide about the problem that Raleen is facing, in, a, in this slide, you can talk, well, let's help people uh, like Raleen. This is our target group to solve this through a solution and that's our go to market. That it is a really nice way to integrate things. Exactly. And uh, we definitely recommend that you um, tell us about your target market from the very beginning based on the story, as Khan was mentioning. And we do expect a very smooth transition from one slide to the other. So it doesn't seem like a school presentation, like, okay, now I'm gonna talk about this. Now I'm gonna talk about this. No, it's all of it is one seamless story that has to flow very smoothly from one slide to the other. And in order to do that, you really have to uh, write your script very nicely and to practice 
your script and the, the transitions, like how you're gonna move from one slide to the other. We will um, allow you to screen share your own slides, but again, in case anything wrong happens, then we will have to do that. And then you'll have to say the next, but otherwise it's like, yeah, you don't just stop up like, oh, now go to market. Let me tell you about it. No, like just continue the story from beginning to end. Uh, competitive analysis, this could be touched upon earlier. If you, again, don't have time given the three minutes limitation, uh, you could mention it somehow in the UVP. But usually uh, in longer pitches, I would say we would have a dedicated slide for competitive analysis where we can show like usually there are one of two methods to do this, either the table format where you list your competitors and the features that you are um, you think are unique about you and tell us how you compare with them, like why you are better because probably you will check more marks than them. And, or the, um, the uh, two by two basically uh, graph where you're gonna be um, uh, pinpointing where each competitor lies and usually you should be. So I think this, this is uh, upside down the graph. Usually your brand should be in the top right corner. Uh, where, for example, instead of saying high cost, we will say um, cost efficiency. So we usually have the better feature uh, or quality uh, at the edges of, of the X and the Y axis. And usually your brand should be at the uh, top right column. Uh, maybe for this hackathon and for the sake of time, you do not have to uh, worry a lot about this, but you definitely need to have an understanding of who else is um, present in the market and what your competitors are. So again, Cohen, uh, what would you like to say here? Uh, two main things. Uh, the firstly is that this, this is perfectly fine. Basically, if each of these was a slide, this is uh, uh, this perfectly fine works. Uh, but if you, so to, for the pitch template, this perfectly fine works. But if you are doing the slide itself, you don't want to do this because if I, I have to actually go to my screen to read high costs. You don't want to have people to, uh, to, to, to reach high quality. And the same goes for the, the other blue uh, boxes. So it's really important that you make sure that you have uh, everything is well readable. And so it's, it's basically a little bigger, it's well readable. And um, I have another point. The okay, let's. I'll say it after. Chris, what do you think? Oh yes, like you know. Um, first of all, the 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 left hand side. This this is more like the quadrant that we use to identify uh, right now, like uh, what your competitor market is, and so this quadrant. They not need to be necessary, but your landscape, right? Like, you know, how is it different? So remember when you're putting up your value proposition, in that value proposition, when you're saying that I have, like in why should I opt for the app? In, in a way, you're already listing down. So let's say you have 10 features and you're listing down that, okay, these are the 10 features that I have in my app. So you're already comparing that, but you're already listing it. But can you create a competitive landscape in that information itself like you know if i'm saying that uh, what was the reason like you know you had hike messenger you have everything but why whatsapp is the biggest uh, uh, thing on 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 the earth right now why everyone wants to be using whatsapp why not hike messenger why not facebook messenger when they have it because advertisement no advertisement that's what whatsapp came up with right so that's kind of a feature so if you create those features and if you put up the name of your startup and then three, four competitors that you have. And then you can say, look, what my competitor, I am giving you 10 features and what the other competitor in the leading market, what they are providing. So in that slide, you're not only pushing your value proposition, you're not only focusing your value proposition, but at the same time, you're showing your competitive advantage. And this is very important because it actually shows that have you really uh, done any competitive analysis because it's very important. Sometimes when you believe that you want to build a uh, product and if you're not really into the competitive landscape and if you're not done your market research like what other uh, competitors are doing, it might create a different portfolio. And the judges might say that what are you doing different because that's the biggest question that not only in the startup ecosystem, uh, in the hackathon, but this is a big question for investors. Investors do ask, what are you doing different from other people, right? That is the first thing that they ask. Whatever be your value proposition, there has to be something which you're doing differently. And you have to prove that, or you have to highlight that. So I believe that concise your slide, but keep 
uh, this information in your value proposition. And if you're able to create those together, that will create a lot of value. What do you think, Cohen, Mona? I really, yes, really agree with sense. this. What I, what I think is also really important to consider is what we're saying here does not apply to every presentation you will do in your life. This applies yeah. to a three minute pitch you do at a hackathon. If you are, for, if you have to speak to investors, you will have a slightly different slide deck. If you have to speak at a, uh, on, for instance, on your, on a Congress, you have a very, very different slide deck because you have more time and you need to talk about research. If you give a lecture, you will have a very different slide deck. So, uh, this does not apply to everything, especially if you think there are some of these things I don't agree with, it's perfectly fine. That's because it doesn't apply to everything very likely. It applies to a three-minute pitch what we're talking about. A lot of this stuff applies to specific startups. If you're presenting research, you will do this differently. And what's also really important there in that context is to consider how you will... Um, uh, how you, in which way uh, in which ways it has to be different and such so there are a lot of, of ways in which your presentation uh, may, may we may want to do it differently so i actually have seen slides uh, of winning teams and they in no way they were missing like aspects of this my, my team actually didn't have a competitive analysis we also didn't have a business model we did win with that that slide because we really had a good story and i've also seen teams that talk about that have a very very different build on this and also it's perfectly fine to divert these are general tips there are, for instance, if you have a McKinsey deck, then you have a lot of text on those slides. That's perfectly fine, but it's for a different purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's really something to consider. It, it, if something doesn't make sense, it might be uh, for that reason. Yes, thank you for that. Definitely, guys. And by the way, you do have a lot of flexibility to uh, you know, just drop some of these slides and not mention them, merge some slides if it makes sense. Um, switch the order. So this is, again, it's just um, a template. Uh, we adopted it from Guy Kawasaki's uh, tips on pitching, but it's up to you. Like uh, you do not have by any means to stick to this. It's just like, uh, yeah, a general template that you have put together uh, based on, on research. And uh, of course, very importantly is to talk about who you are. As Cohen said, you may want to touch upon this a bit at the beginning, if, if it makes sense. Again, it really depends. Uh, so for us, we usually encourage the teams, especially if they don't have a lot of experience in the domain that they are now tapping into or the solution that they are pitching, like to keep the, uh, the, the keep the slide till a bit further, um, like later time, simply because you want to captivate the audience, you want to convince them about the problem and the solution and then tell them who you are. But if for, for any reason you believe that you need to mention this at the very beginning because one of the team members, for example, has a lot of experience in this or they have done something similar before that, it's also possible. Uh, and for us, the most important thing here is, uh, as you can see in this slide, they are just mentioning the titles. For us, this is not the most important thing. We really need to know what are your skill sets? Okay, what are you bringing to the table? And why you are the right team to make this possible? And remember that there is um, a grade for the team. So team potential is one of the judging criteria. And of course, you'll tell me in three minutes, the judges won't be able to really tell or judge whether you are the right team. This is your role to convince them that you, you have the right mix to make this happen. So Cohen? Yeah, I fully agree with this. I think this is seriously one of the most important slides. One thing, uh, as you see here as well, this slide, this, this, this white, the white space on the slide won't work on a separate slide, but especially the text underneath is too small to put if you will still add it there. So that's really important to make it a little bigger, uh, the text. Uh, so really, con this is, I think is one of the most important slides you have in your deck to, at least for me as a judge, this will be very, very important. Also, uh, remember that, like if you can, an example of a story and how you can start at the beginning and one of the teams of the winning teams of the MIT Act for the future actually started as well with, for instance, that, uh, she actually was an HR graduate from Harvard, but she was in this meeting with a, um, 
if I think she, uh, if I remember that correctly. But uh, what she, what she told me very was also interesting. She was in a Zoom meeting uh, with like a boardroom, and she kept being over Charlotte, and she, she kept being unable to talk, and it was so annoyed by it. She didn't know what to do about it because basically you see that men have a tendency to talk a lot more and to overshout in such and such meetings. And then she turned also the statistic that there was three times as little uh, uh, that women speak three times less than men via Zoom meetings, which is a lot. So that's a, a way you could introduce yourself there, show you have some background. And then I and then she also, of course, the rest of the team at the very last slide. That's really important. What's also important, and I really like, for instance, about this slide, is diversity and diversity of team. That's something, uh, this is this is for a lot of, of reasons. But for instance, if you're working with data, you cannot analyze data well unless you have everyone, every subgroup, every stakeholder in there. And this is a good example. You have young people, old people, people of different descent. You have, have uh, two men, two, uh, two females. So that's really, really important to make sure that you have uh, uh, to emphasize that. And what you could, for instance, emphasize besides skills, which is really important as well, is uh, backgrounds, nationalities, cultures, universities, study uh, uh, choices, focuses in professional life. You can also work with logos there. That also looks really nice. So it's really recommended that you uh, emphasize indeed how you relate yourself to the uh, to the solution and the problem and as well how you uh how your skill set relates to this and especially in context of the rest of the team so make sure that you emphasize why your team is uh has a diverse skill set and can do this yes Chris. yes so i think um this slide can go uh both ways right like one of the ways to introduce your team beforehand and why? If you have a very strong team, for example, if I'm working on an economic equity problem statement, which is with, uh, let's say, uh, in an e-commerce domain or in a school or in an in a education sector, I can actually get in touch. Like, you know, Cohen is from economic equity side. So I can get like Cohen as one of the person. I can get an educator on the slide. I can get myself on the slide. And I can get another person on the slide, like, you know, Mona, she, she has a complete understanding on the entrepreneurship. So it's important to show your team, but it is also important that you have to make sure that how are you exactly uh, putting this particular information, whether you want to put it before the team, like, you know, before, when, the, when, the, when you actually start your pitch, after that, you can say that this is the team we are bringing together all of it. Always remember that you will lose time. So make sure that you can actually put into, because you can wrap up this slide just by showing the names, even if you have like 10 seconds left. But let's say if you are spending 30 seconds on this, then you have very less time for the rest of the pitch. So you can always look into the timing of it. So you can have this slide at the end of the pitch and make sure that you put up the names uh, with the experience and the field. Because as Quinn said, diversity is uh, very much needed, but it's both the way, diversity from a gender and inclusion from the gender, but also diversity from the experience that you're talking about, right? Like, do you have the right skill set? Where, for example, again, this is not an investor pitch, but example, why when somebody invests into you, and that's what we are trying to have a uh, point over here, that why you, like why you are the perfect person to solve this problem and why we think that you can solve this problem because not only of the experience and of the thought process, but because the right set of people who are part of it, because people make the team is comprising and the team comprise the entire uh, journey of the entire startup or the entire uh, efforts that you're putting up. Great. So I think we have 10 minutes left and we're almost done. Here is a slide that you can totally skip for this pitch because of time constraints. And if you believe that it will be obvious, okay, what kind of metrics you are gonna be using. Uh, but again, as I said yesterday, when we were explaining the Lean Canvas model, it's very important for you to have this in mind. And this is one of the slides that you could keep as an appendix in case you get asked about it, you can show. Uh, so there are many things that you can keep as an appendix, put them after the last slide in case the judges ask you more questions and you expect them to do so, you just like bring it up 
and explain it very quickly. Uh, so again, key metrics are how are you going to measure your success? And because we're talking about social innovation, because we're talking about solving problems and creating solutions with a social impact, it's important for you to think about it. Okay, Cohen, do you believe that this is uh, going to be necessary in this pitch? Uh, yes, but not as a slide. This should be clear from your three minute pitch, from your story. This should be completely clear already. Okay, Chris. Exactly. This cannot. Be, this should not be into the three minute uh, pitch story. It could be uh, coming around your value proposition, right? Or uh, how are you when you're taking the journey? So your value proposition, your journey, uh, your business model, these key metrics will be few of the things which will go through the entire story. So I believe that it should not be a separate slide for, for the three minute pitch, but yes, if you want, you can create this in detail and give it an appendix so that if a judge asks a question, you can quickly go to the slide, open it up and tell it. Exactly. And one thing I usually tell, tell our participants is that if you know for sure that a question will arise, like just make sure you answer it in the pitch deck. Like some people say, no, like I will keep it for Q&A because I know how to answer that. But for me, it, it, it doesn't look good if there's an obvious question that you know will come up and it was not answered in the pitch. Uh, so any insights on that as well? Um, well, I think that's what's really important is to consider, for instance, for me, you broke up for a moment, so I was unable to hear a portion of this. Now, I can stitch it together, but uh, uh, so I would really, really consider to be able to basically move uh, whatever the way things go. For instance, I have had hackathons where something went wrong in the Google Slides, something with the uploading, and then you uh, actually, then you actually are missing slides, so be prepared for things to go wrong. That's normal. That's a part of hackathons. So every now and then, you, you a part of your voice may drop or you may miss a certain part of your video or you may miss this or that so make sure you have you have you are prepared for that uh that's i think that's really really important to uh be prepared for things to go wrong while you are pitching things will likely not go perfect and that's part of the real world and especially a part of hackathons and yeah. in the q a it's recommended uh I, I think that very often you may expect certain questions but things may go very very differently so we actually my team in the mit latin america challenge actually has a slide basically with like a 10 pager just with information in case you will get a question these were just uh 10 pages in google, google docs small letter type but we knew where what, what where what was so we were able to get to answer the question the only a reason we were actually able to answer the question was because of a last minute mentor session related to the socioeconomic uh, socioeconomics of a specific context. All right, uh, I would just like to uh, talk a bit about this slide. So it's very important for you to tell us what, what you have done so far and how do you plan to move ahead. And here it's important as well for any teams who have started this project before the hackathon to also explain, like we started in uh, July 2020, and this is what we have done so far. These are the competitions that we have won to date. And this is what we are like, for example, now we're on an accelerator program in this hackathon, we did this and that, uh, and so on. So, uh, and for those, of course, who started in the hackathon, you would simply say, like, uh, we teamed up in this hackathon and we, we started working, uh, sorry about the background noise. Uh, and we started working on this and within these two days, this is what happened. This is the progress so far. And this is how we plan to move along. Krish, any like uh, comments here? Yeah, so this is very important. I would say that this is one of the most important uh, point because this actually tells you, for example, 48 hours, you know, we have all the passion which comes in and we're building something and we're saying we're going to do this. We have, been, we have found it and this is something. But your progress vision is something which has to be there because that defines, like, do you have a vision to it, right? Because that really defines that how you're going to scale it up. This timeline gives a aspect or gives an insight that how are you going to scale your startup? For example, if I'm looking at this timeline, in 2008, I will be building my MVP. And by 2009, starting, I'm trying to targeting at least uh, uh, to launch the MVP with 10,000 users. 
by 2010 january i am trying to make sure that i have at least 150000 users and by 2011 i want to reach up to 500000 users by 2012 i want to use 1 million users how are you going to do that what are the technology advancement what are the ways how you're going to do it what kind of channel information like you know you can start with social media you can start with partnership collaboration think this always that your partnership and collaboration if you think it will not happen the day one it takes time to build collaboration it takes time to build partnership and sometimes it takes up to six to seven months after you build your mvp it takes at least four or five months to get it validated people will use it people will validate it then you go for a collaboration and partnership model and then they will see that you have customers you have users and then the collaborator can think of i mean i say collaboration it could be anything like you know you can collaborate with a bank you can collaborate with ngos they need to understand that whether you are able to work on that. And uh, another point, which I believe that uh, I think Cohen and Mona must have covered it up. One point is there, is, there is always going to be a question that how many people can pitch? Always remember that there is only three minutes. If you try to pitch all together, what happens is the flow of a person, like, you know, you are telling a story. So let one person pitch and that person can take over. It is sometimes good to uh, have the other person to come into a point and they can pitch, that's fine. But the problem happens, the transition, the way how you're pitching. So example, if I'm pitching in a way, and if I have two more people to pitch with me, Mona and Cohen both, uh, they need to know that how I am transitioning into it. You will have your script ready, but that's another thing. There's a transition of flow of words, flow of emotion, the action. So it is better that you have one person to pitch. However, when the judges come in, and that, that really happens. So in all the hacks that I have been part of, there have been like person who can really pitch very well, but there was a technical question. The moment the judging round came up, the technical people, the financial advisor, they were just you know ready. So if there was a question on a technical thing, the technical uh, team member just say that, hi, I, I was handling the technical or just with a name because you will have very less time. So during the Q&A, make sure that the people who knows the answer best, they should, because if you fumble, right? If you don't know the answer, if you fumble, that creates that, okay, um, he's trying to think of an answer, you know, straight off the hat, but you should know about it. So during the pitch, let it be one person, during the q and let it be the people who can answer best. And to add to that, if you're in a Q&A, what's really, really important is to be uh, considering how you talk to the judges. I've had teams that actually uh, said to the judges, that's not true. And that's really awkward when you're basically sp speaking to one of the foremost experts on this topic in the region. You, very many teams then started this weekend and you say, no, that's not the way that the real world works. So these people are so much experience that you're not going to get away with that. So it's really, really important that you uh, consider how to do this. I actually also uh, disagreed with one of the judges in, I, I, there was, I, it wasn't the one speaking, but I disagreed with one of the judges. But if I would have said that, I said, well, my perspective was in this, 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 this. And then you kind of show that you thought about it and that you have to have a bit of an understanding but you don't straight up say that's not true you can say so be smart and say, say it in a respectful way that's really uh consider how how you say it because these are the form these are very likely foremost experts on this topic and you it's you can disagree with something but consider how in which way you disagree with them Exactly, and we, we do not expect you at all to be defensive. So uh, it's it's uh, only normal for judges to challenge you. And honestly, they are here to challenge you. We want them to challenge you. It is the uh, best part of this experience that they will get you thinking about new points, things you have not thought of before. And this is how you're gonna benefit from this experience. But uh, again, yes, be very respectful to them. Uh, and again, demonstrate this growth mindset and open mindedness and if, if really like they hit you with a question that you have not thought of before simply say like if you don't have a good answer right away like you don't you don't always have to show that i have all the answers in the world because it's not really possible just say like that's a really good question i'm i believe we have not thought of it before but we're definitely going to work on that and make sure we take it into consideration like this kind of honesty even though you really didn't have an answer is much better than just throwing in anything that wouldn't make sense, for example. Any final remarks? 
I think um, stay, especially stay confident when you're pitching. Uh, I, I would think that that many people, yeah, also members have been at hackathons. I also have seen basically the basically been on the organizing side in the back end. Very often things go wrong, but participants have no idea. And this is because we you basically know how to uh, uh, because you don't convey that. You basically talk about it in a confident way. So the same for you. If, for instance, your pitch drops, but someone else immediately takes over, then no one had an idea that happened, and that's perfectly fine. You don't know what someone is thinking. You just see basically their actions. So if you talk in a confident way, and then you say, for instance, your internet drops, and you're expecting that, and you say, okay, now I'm giving over to them. And then this person that then uh, takes over, and uh, do so in a smooth way, then we had no understanding that happens. So that's really, if you do things confidently and, and you also admit basically when something runs wrong, also in a confident way, that's a really good way of approaching into your pitch. And so really, basically mistakes there and technical difficulties, there are no issue, it's just how you handle them. Chris? Yes. Yes, yeah, so, and, and I also want to quickly uh, put one quick thing is that you have your you should put this kind of timer when you practice. The reason is, I'll tell you what the reason is. When you are transitioning from one slide to another, so let's say you have got six slides. If you put pitch, do not re I think this is a lack, Chris. Yeah, you probably see what we mean now. Yeah, I don't think we can hear you, Chris, anymore. 15 seconds on your, uh, you know. All right, so I think we lost Krish due to internet connection issues. Uh, Cohen, one last thing. Do you uh, recommend again, that they... All right, so just one last point. Do you recommend that they put a contact slide at the end of it, or do you believe that for this three-minute pitch and this hackathon, there is really no need for that? I don't think there's need for that. I would recommend to also perhaps add it in some way in the uh, in basically the overview of your team. Okay, Chris, uh, are you still with us? Yeah. You, you can obviously use your uh, contact slide and want to put, like if you have uh, an Instagram handle, if you want to create that, that's fine. But that's the last of the thing because those contact slides are like, it's good to have. But I would say that a sponsor, or if you're working towards a sponsor, make sure those logos like, where do you want to build you? Like, you know, for example, if you're building uh, NGO kind of a service. So if you have aspiration that I want to uh, connect with Gets and Marina Foundation, so put that logo that this is my aspiration over there. Or if you have already done some kind of customer uh, interviews, which were the customer interviews? Where, where are they from? Hospitals? What, uh, you know, you know what, uh, they are from? that is also important. So the lead time, uh, these are few points that has to be the contact slide. It's okay to have, like you can have it, but I'd say that oh fun, and uh, we look forward to connect with all of you. Great, thank you so much for uh, like uh, being in this uh, pitch session. I really enjoyed the, this uh, three-way uh, conversation, and I hope that. Yeah, again, a demonstration of what could happen. <laughs> uh, so I hope all participants have benefited. So now I would like to ask Kahani to reopen the breakout rooms in case anybody has a question here about the pitch. I can take a few of those questions, but make sure that one of your team members at least is in the breakout room uh, to start benefiting from the last mentorship session that you will have in this hackathon. Okay. The answer is yes, the breakout rooms are ready. So we're going to run in a good way. 
this is a life example of what might go wrong like you know somebody <laughs> might dropping out <laughs> so somebody have to be there to continue what mona was supposed to say yes that's that's how you know your pitch will be like that so this is this is like we plant this let's just put it that way yeah okay so jihan we added all the participants to the breakout rooms can you now tell me the mentor's name so i can add them yeah i believe uh, mona that we can uh, stop recording